What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. I got my brother here chilling with me. Uh, I'm going to be installing... Ah, that was bright. A short shifter for the Celica to fix this horrendous stock shifter. I don't actually think it's this bad, like, you know, stock. It's just mine is pretty worn out. So I think it's just, it's past its due date. Uh, not only that, the bushings for the base of the shifter that everything mounts to, they're bad. So when I wiggle the car in neutral like that, uh, without this trim piece on, you can see the entire base wobbling around. I'm probably going to try to show you guys that once I get all this taken off, which will take me two seconds. But I will see you guys in just a second when I can show you the shifter base and why I'm replacing it and uh, the new shifter and the parts that it comes with. So I got everything apart and if you look, it might be a little hard for you guys to see. Here, you try to hold the phone that way because I keep shaking the phone while also shaking the shifter. Yeah, you can see it. Look at the base wiggle around along with the shifter. And then going f to the forward and back gears, you know, rolling through the gears, it's direct and notchy, but it's also somehow like soft at the same time. It's kind of like mushy. I don't know how to describe it, but I hate it. If I ever am sitting in neutral and the light turns green and I have to like, you know, go into gear, sometimes it's a fucking bitch. And because this car has no reverse lockout and reverse is right there, you'll accidentally put it in reverse and you mean to go into first sometimes. Without a shift knob, it's very easy to know what gear you're in. But when you have a shift knob on there and you have something easy to just grab and swing around, there's been a couple times where I put it in reverse and almost fucking went back at a light. Luckily, it beeps like a semi truck when you do it. Um... Otherwise, I don't really know what I'm doing, so I think I have to get the center console off and out of the way, um, and then probably take these pins off of the shifter cables, and knock, I know there's a pin right here, and this whole little flap opens up, and that's kind of a pain to knock out, but the new shifter does come with a pin, I'll show you guys once I get this one removed. So I got the center console out, and that first cable off. Uh, it is just a little washer and then this clip. The clip really isn't that strong. I just used a screwdriver, barely pried on it, and it came right out. Don't lose it, though, because it's a very weird-looking clip I've never seen before. So if you lose it, you're kind of screwed. Um, now I think I can hammer this pin out and lift this flap up, and maybe that will allow me to get access to the second cable down there. I don't know. I really should research this, but I don't know. kind of just going in gung-ho doing my thing i guess but we'll figure it out in just a second i just want to give you a little status update it is going okay i guess i don't really know if i'm doing what i'm supposed to or not so can't be bad ignorance is bliss all right so i got everything disconnected including this little bitch of a clip pin flat thing uh that holds in this little shifter arm and spring i lost the spring but now, there's the spring. Don't lose this spring. It's very important. Uh, this is also incredibly greasy and disgusting, and I just touched that. So uh, now I just have to find out how to get the actual shifter. Oh, never mind. I don't have to find out nothing. There we go. Um, so I don't think this is on a stock shifter. I think this is like a shift boot holder they added. So. Got to figure out how to get that to come off so I can slide this out and then take out that little retainer right there. Get my bushings and put them on the new shifter and also clean up this mess I'm making down here. But, yeah, overall it's coming apart pretty well if you just know what you're doing or, you know, watch a YouTube video. I did cave and watch one. Um, so, yeah, watch a video that shows you more in detail. I kind of don't do detailed installations just because... They're, they've already been made before. This is not a new car. So, yeah, I'll see you guys in a second once I have this cleaned up, this taken apart better, and I got the new shifter out to compare. All right, so I got the entire shifter assembly out, and here is the new shifter compared to the old one. So if I line up the bottom uh, bushing areas, the pivot point or fulcrum point is higher on the new shift knob, that's what makes it shorter. Anytime you see somebody say, oh, I made a short shifter, and they fucking cut their stock shifter in half, cut out a big section and weld it down, you're not actually doing anything. It's physically shorter, but your throw between shifts is the exact same. 
Now, granted, this one has this long little curved penis look. Fucking got slammed in a door, and this one's just straight. And even if I lined up the pivot points, it is significantly shorter. So this is going to be an extremely short throw, I hope. And then in the box, you get hardware, washers, including... Where is it at? There you go, up top. It's a little hard to see. Uh, the pin that holds in that arm. Nothing will focus today. That little arm. And then new base bushings for the entire shifter base. So I now need to just pry out these little rubber bushings. It shouldn't be too hard. I have the metal inserts removed. After that, I can start the reassembly process and getting this whole thing put back together. Right, so I got the whole shifter assembly reassembled and I got the shift knob that it comes with on. I forgot to mention that earlier. And first off, in neutral, there is no more flex in this base. This base is fucking solid. And then this thing is super notchy to the point where it's actually a little bit more difficult. Like I'd have to get used to it a lot using the shift knob. But if I use my old one, which this is a one pound shift knob I got on Amazon for like 40 bucks. And it, it's fucking heavy for a shift knob. It makes it real easy to get this in gear to where it's light and notchy, but it's very firm. That's what it was. The last shifter, uh, this one. It was not firm at all. It was just it would it was it would have a nice click into gear, but it just wasn't firm on doing it. It was kind of squishy going around. But this is like super, super firm. A lot more than I thought it would be, because I don't have the bushings for the shifter cables, which I'm still gonna install those, but honestly, I don't need to. Also, I lied to you guys. I just realized I forgot to put on this clip and washer for that shift cable down there. So I should do that before I drive and all of a sudden I lose all sideways gears and I can only do third and fourth gear. That would be impossible for me to start in. So I'm gonna get these installed and get the interior wrapped up and put back together. I got the shifter in fully buttoned up. I found the screws that go to my window switches, which is cool even though they don't work. Um, this shifter is incredibly short and like pretty, I'm not going to say difficult to use, but it, you have to get used to it if you go from a stock shifter. But one of the best things to me about this is my stock shifter would hit that charger right there in fifth gear. And now I have miles of space, even to get my hand in there. Um, so I'm definitely going to switch to my one pound shift knob because it's just more user friendly, I guess you can say. Um, I might rock this one for a little bit just because I like the feel of it. If I can find a shift knob more like this one in one pound that would be sick or somewhere closer to that but overall i give the shifter for its price of like 85 dollars solid purchase right here like seven out of ten purchase the only thing i don't like is it's it's really short so if you're still trying to put this on just like a daily driver car it's maybe a little too short for that and but i'm going to be doing some aggressive driving um and I'm a little worried that it might get worse when I get those bushings out and up there. But I'm still going to do it just in case uh, it makes it better. But yeah, 7 out of 10 purchase. Totally worth the price. I highly suggest all of you Celica, GT, and GTS owners go get it. Because I believe it works on both. If not, look for a GT version. But I didn't look for anything specific. I just bought the first one that showed up on eBay. So I assume they're all the same. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. As always, follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. The links are in the description. Peace out.